I'm gonna dash through, dash away, make it look like we're running away. Erlong's still kind of chasing us down. Up, oh, he's hanging in the back. We're gonna basic attack the Cthulhu in his ultimate form. That's how not afraid we are. We're gonna go ahead, miss our uppercut, dash through, try to remove some attack chance. We're gonna try to stick to this Erlong. We wanna prioritize him over Cthulhu. We actually have a chance of killing the Erlong. Cthulhu is going to be a tanky boy. Cayman's Lots is able to get the pick onto the Erlong. We're gonna dash through. We're gonna use our orange three. We go ahead and attack him with our blue one. Cayman's Lots doesn't want to tank, but we will gladly tank. We're gonna go ahead and cripple him. Hit him with the slow. Hit him with our ultimate. Uppercut him, and we're able to get the pick onto the Cthulhu. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play the Beyblade, the Topper, the King Arthur himself, and Solo. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, King Arthur, you just use your abilities. There is kind of a combo order, but you really just use your abilities. So let's go ahead and jump into this kit. King Arthur's one in the blue form is overhead slash. In the orange form, it is hamstring. In the blue form, King Arthur deals a devastating overhead blow in melee range that creates a slashing attack that travels forward. Enemies hit by melee strike take bonus damage from the slicing attack. In his orange form, King Arthur swipes low, crippling, and damaging enemies that are struck. The melee bonus damage is going to be 30% at level 1, 50% at level 5, and the cripple duration is going to be 1.25 seconds. If he hits an enemy with either of these abilities, he's going to gain 3 energy. King Arthur's 2 in the blue form is Battle Stomp, and in the orange form it is Uppercut. In the blue form, King Arthur stomps the ground with heavy force, causing enemies around him to take damage and become slowed for 2.5 seconds. In the orange form, King Arthur charges forward, stopping on the first enemy got hit. At the end of the charge, King Arthur unleashes an uppercut, knocking enemies into the air. The slow is going to be 20% at level 1 and 40% at level 5. If he hits an enemy with either ability, he's going to gain 4 energy. King Arthur's 3 in the blue form is Twin Cleave, and in the orange form, it is Blade Storm. In the blue form, King Arthur unleashes 2 cleave attacks while charging forward. Enemies hit by a cleave take damage and have their protections reduced. In the orange form, King Arthur swings Excalibur around him, charging forward and damaging enemies 5 times before winding up for a final strike that deals more damage. King Arthur is immune to knockups for the duration. The protection shred is going to be 7%, and he's going to gain 1.5 energy per damage dealt. King Arthur's ultimate at 35 energy is Sundering Strike. King Arthur winds up a massive jab, charging forward slightly before striking. Enemies hit by this jab are going to be stunned for 1 second. At 80 energy, this ability is Excalibur's Wrath. King Arthur charges forward with Excalibur drawn. If King Arthur hits an enemy god, he launches them into the air and unleashes a barrage of 6 attacks, after which he launches them back to the ground, dealing damage to the target and any enemies below. While in the air, he's going to be dealing 2% of the target's maximum health per hit. And then the landing damage is going to scale up from 5% maximum health at level 1 to 13% maximum health at level 5. And King Arthur's passive, Steadfast. Each ability that damages a god results in a stack of Steadfast, reducing the damage taken and increasing energy gain. Each time King Arthur uses an ability, he swaps between his blue and orange abilities. All abilities are on instant cast. Attack speed and item passives do not benefit his basic attacks, instead attack speed increases his energy gain. He's going to gain 1.5% damage mitigation per stack and 20% bonus energy per stack. He can have up to 4 stacks that last 15 seconds each, and the attack speed conversion is 33%. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1 we want to put a point into our 1, level 2 put a point into our 3, level 3 put a point into our 2, then we want to max out our 1, max out our ultimate whenever we can, max out our 3, then max out our 2. So we are going against a Cthulhu, which means we're going to be going into magical defense before physical defense. Right now Cthulhu is giving us a bit of a run for our money on this first laning phase. 
We probably could have used our abilities a little bit better, but we're pretty low on health, pretty low on mana, and he just has an advantage right now. We're gonna go ahead, kind of fall back. Kamazots is rotating back to help clean up the wave, so we're gonna rotate back ourselves. If Kamazots is going for blue, we would stand near jungle in a spot where we get XP for the blue and for the minion wave. We're gonna go ahead and make our play for the blue buff. Right now we have seven stacks on our Warrior's Blessing. We go ahead and pick up our blue buff and we have our ultimate fully charged at 80 stacks. We're gonna spin around, get some damage, kind of saving our one for the minion wave. We try to use our ultimate right there, but we got dashed out. We're gonna use our ultimate right here. Cthulhu pretty much has maximum health. We really just did it to kind of poke him out a little bit. So King Arthur has six abilities, which means he has a lot of base damage. You don't really need to worry about power scaling on King Arthur. Instead, we can just worry about landing all of our abilities and being tanky. Instead of going into the Warrior Tabi, we're going to be going into the Reinforced Greaves. The Reinforced Greaves are going to provide us 10 physical power, 150 health, 20% crowd control reduction, and 18% movement speed. It has a passive that every time we take damage, we're going to gain 3 protections of physical and magical protections. Per damage that we take, we can stack up to 7 times and it lasts for 6 seconds. So we're, we're constantly running in there, taking damage from the minions, taking damage from the Cthulhu. So getting these boots is going to help us survive in this early game. We go ahead and use our ultimate, getting a little bit of poke onto the Cthulhu. Oh, that was a bad miss on our one. Another little tip with King Arthur is you want to try to land a basic attack in between each ability. It seems simple, but it can really up the amount of damage that you deal to an enemy. Whenever you hit an enemy with your blue one, they're going to take increased basic attack damage. We're knocked up immune in our orange three. So whenever Cthulhu dashed, we did not get affected. We just took the damage. Our blue buff is up. We're trying to get near it, maybe even start it Earl on Shen's here, so we're just gonna dash away. Right now, Fighting into Erlong and Cthulhu is not a good fight for us. Eventually, it will be a good fight for us. Cthulhu will be tanky, but we'll actually be able to get picks onto the Erlong. We're going to go ahead and dash away, use our three, we get taunted. We're going to use our ultimate to get out. We probably could have used our blue three to get out, but our ultimate makes us CC immune while we're dashing. We're going to go ahead and start working on our blue buff. So with King Arthur, I feel like you either want to go into Reinforced Greaves and Stone of Gaia or you want to go into Warrior Tabai and Soul Eater. This game, we're going against a Cthulhu who has a couple of knockups and knockbacks, so I think it really makes sense that we're going into the Reinforced Greaves and the Stone of Gaia. We'll get to Stone of Gaia in just a moment whenever we actually start buying it. I'd say Cthulhu's still winning this wave somehow. We have a level on him, so we're super happy about that. He just hit level 8. We've been level 8 for a minute. We're going to go ahead and spin around. Use our 1 on the minions. We're putting all of our points into our 1, so we've got to make sure that we're hitting wave with our 1. That's going to allow us to actually clear it. We're going to go ahead and start working on Stone of Gaia. So whenever leaving Fountain and we don't have a teleport, you want to use your dashes, use a basic attack, use your next dash, use a basic attack, and that'll help you get there a little bit quicker. We're taking advantage of the auto attack canceling ability or mechanic within Smite. So whenever King Arthur does a basic attack, he lunges forward and his basic attacks are cleaves. If you use an ability after using a basic attack you can kind of cancel out the slowness after the basic attack so he'll lunge forward he'll be slow a little bit if you use an ability you can just lunge forward and then we can switch to the ability so 
So our orange one cripples, meaning that if Cthulhu is dashing at us and we time it just right and we're able to hit him with our orange one, we're going to actually cancel him out of his dash because it cripples. Erlong has a dash, Medusa has a dash, the Sun Wukong also has a dash. We're going to go ahead and rotate back to our blue buff. King Arthur is pretty de dependent on his blues early on. He just has six abilities consuming mana, so it really helps to have mana. Right here, we're just weaving in basic attacks between Enemy each ability. Cthulhu dashes, we're going to hit him with our orange too. If we can, we want to try to start the engagement with our blue 3 or our blue dash. This is going to allow us to remove some protections for the usage of our other abilities. Using an ability, weaving in a basic attack in between each ability. Cthulhu is able to taunt us out of that or fear us out of that. And that's the mechanic within Cthulhu's passive. So now we are starting to clear wave a little bit faster than the Cthulhu. I feel like in the early game, we weren't too focused on landing our one on the minion wave. We were kind of just bopping the Cthulhu. That's a perfect example of us crippling him out of his dash. We're going to use our Beyblade ability. We're going to use our ultimate. Get him pretty weak. Use our blue two to slow him. We hit him with our one. And he's able to dash out. Oof, I think we could have ulted him there. We had the 30 energy needed to get the stun off. He might have been in range. With King Arthur, you kind of just have to know his range on his abilities because all of his abilities are on instant cast. If I were to have held my ultimate to try to see how far it would have gone, it would have just immediately cast. Go ahead and clear wave. We're going to hit this totem of two. And we're probably going to back and get Stone of Gaia online. Thanks. So Stone of Gaia. Stone of Gaia is going to provide us 400 health, 25 HP 5, and 15 MP 5. It has two passives. The first one is if you are hit by a knock up, a knock back, a pull, grab, we're going to gain 15% of our maximum health over the next five seconds. This does not trigger on vortex effects and it can only occur once every 45 seconds. Its other passive is we're going to heal 0.5% of our maximum health every second. We've got a bit of a fight going on in the left. Erlong rotated over. We can actually get the pick on Erlong. Erlong doesn't have protection, so we're not too concerned. We should be able to get the pick onto him. We're gonna pop a health potion. We're gonna use our blue one. We're able to get the poke. Anubis rotates over. We're gonna use, oh, we need to get out of here. Anubis can be an issue. Go ahead and dash out. Use our other ability to dash out, we use our cripple, we use our ultimate, we use our one, and we're able to get the pick onto the Erlong Shen. We're gonna keep falling back. If we did not have the reinforced greaves, I think we would be going down right there. Go ahead and focus on the wave. Anubis is here, he's able to root us or stun us with his two. We're going to fall back. Terra rotates in. Fabiara is also here. We're going to go ahead and stand in the Terra heal. Try to heal up a little bit. Now that we've cleared wave, we're going to go ahead and rotate to our blue buff. Right there, we used our orange too, just to get a little closer to the wave. We really used to switch stances.
We're able to steal the Cthulhu blue buff. We're gonna go ahead and just walk on out of here. Stone of Guy is a really good item when going against a Cthulhu. That mechanic right there on his dash, his knockback, that's going to heal us 15% of our maximum health over five seconds. Then whenever he's in his ultimate and he hits us with his two, that is also going to heal us. Missing a couple of abilities. Trying to weave in basic attacks in between each ability. We do have our ultimate in the Excalibur form. We're gonna go ahead and spin in on him. Hit the minions with our one. Cthulhu is able to fear us. We hit him with our critical. We dash through him. We remove some protections. We're gonna slow him. We're gonna hit him with a basic. We're gonna spin around. Avoid his damage. Hit him with our blue one. Unfortunately, that misses. So right now with Reinforced Greaves and Stone of Gaia, we are just able to out pressure him like nobody's business. We're gonna go ahead, clean up the minion wave, land our blue one onto him, hit him with the uppercut, hit him with the slow. We're gonna hit him with the orange one, which is gonna cripple him. We could try to ult him, but I think he would just hide under tower and run away. So we're just gonna fall back and go for a blue buff. Ultimate is ready. Actually, if Cthulhu wants to hang around, we're going to dash in. We were able to move 7% of his protections right there. Hit him with the slow. Hit him with the cripple. Miss the one. And we're going to use our ultimate. And we're able to get the pick onto the Cthulhu using our ultimate. So, some combo abilities with King Arthur's abilities. You usually want to try to start a fight with your blue 3 to dash in and remove the protections. If you use your orange 2, the uppercut, that really sets you up well for your blue 1, the line attack. Erlong Shen's here. We will gladly take this fight with him. We don't have any physical protections other than our boots, but I think we can really chunk them down. We use our ultimate in the weakened form to get the stun and set up the Kamazot. Well done. We're going to go ahead and tickle this totem of kill. Come in, use our orange one. Dash through, remove some protections on the Cthulhu. Spin around. Hit him with our blue one, which is now going to allow us to deal additional damage on our basic attacks. Hit him with the cripple, that cancels his dash. He uses his ultimate. We're still not... Scared. We're still going to try to fight into him. Getting some good damage onto him. We have a fat penny in the pocket, so we are going to want him back here in just a moment. He's able to clear the wave. We're going to go ahead and bait blade around. Hit him with our one. Dantas Anubis is here. We're in a bit of trouble. We're going to use our ultimate to get away. We're going to dash away. And we're going to go ahead and back. We do have the teleport glyph. We're going to be going into Genji's guard. I think we're about to get right back into the action. So let me go over Genji's guard once we know it's safe. Yeah, they're pushing the tower. We're about to teleport in. We're going to focus this Anubis. We're going to Beyblade around. Hit him with the slow. He uses his Aegis. We use our ultimate. Right now, he is life stealing up a decent amount. A really decent amount. He's healed up a lot, a lot. <laughs> Tear comes in. We're pretty weak ourselves. We miss our ultimate. We're gonna dash through, remove some protections, hit him with the one. Hit him with the blue one. Sung Wukong is now here. We're gonna dash away. We're pretty weak. We're gonna pop a health potion. Keep trying to stay alive. We're wiggling, Terra's here, Kamazots is rotating in. We're able to avoid a lot of the damage right here. We're gonna use our ultimate, Sung Wukong is dashing down on us. We hit him with this, with our two to slow him. Cthulhu uses his ultimate. Sung Wukong is probably gonna dash in on this Terra. He's able to get the pick onto the Terra. 
We're gonna try to chase down this Sun Wukong. We were probably below 100 health, and now we're above half health. Heimdall's able to come in. We're able to really clean up this team fight. And we are able to survive that, and our health just recovered so much from Stone of Gaia. So, Genji's Guard. Genji's Guard is going to provide us 150 health, 70 magical protections, 40 MP5, and 10% cooldown reduction. We're going to go ahead and start working on Fire Giant since we just wiped everyone over here. Genji's Guard has a passive that when you take magical damage from abilities, your cooldowns are reduced by 3 seconds. This effect can only occur once every 30 seconds. So our magical matchup is against a Cthulhu. They also have the Anubis. Anytime we take damage from them, our cooldowns are going to be reduced. We're going to go ahead and start working on the blue buff. That team fight was a good rotation from our team. Somehow we were able to survive and regenerate a ton of health right there. So all that felt really good. We hit Cthulhu with our one. We're gonna go ahead and dash out of his ability. Dash through him, remove some protections. We're gonna spin around, get some additional damage on him, slow him with a two. Hit him with a cripple. Hit the minions with our blue one. We're gonna miss our uppercut. We're gonna spin in, remove some protections, hit him with our three. Erlong is here. We actually wanna fight Erlong. We are not afraid of Erlong at all. I'm gonna dash through, dash away, make it look like we're running away. Erlong's still kinda of chasing us down. Up, oh, he's hanging in the back. We're gonna basic attack the Cthulhu in his ultimate form. That's how not afraid we are. We're going to go ahead and miss our uppercut, dash through, try to remove some protections. We're going to try to stick this Erlong. We're going to prioritize him over Cthulhu. We actually have a chance of killing the Erlong. Cthulhu is going to be a tanky boy. Kamen's is able to get the pick onto the Erlong. We're going to dash through. We're going to use our orange three. We're going to go ahead and attack him with our blue one. Kamen's doesn't want to tank, but we will gladly tank. We're going to go ahead and cripple him, hit him with the slow. Hit him with our ultimate, uppercut him, and we're able to get the pick onto the Cthulhu. We're going to go ahead and push this tower. Getting the tier 1 tower is going to give everyone on our team a little bit of gold. Plus 75 gold for everyone on the team. We're going to go ahead and back because we do have the teleport glyph. So we're going to be going into Gladiator Shield. Gladiator Shield is going to provide us 25 power, 40 physical protections, 200 health, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that whenever damaging an enemy god below 60% health with an ability, we're going to deal an additional 15 plus 25% of our protections from items and abilities. This can only trigger once per ability. So right now we have, well, we'll round up, we have about 300 protections, so we're dealing an additional 75 damage plus 15, so a total of 90 damage per ability. I'm going to go ahead and work on the Oni Fury, the enemy team is here. I'm going to go ahead and ult this Erlong, looks like he used his beads to cancel my ult early. Heim's able to get the pick onto the Erlong. We're pretty weak, but we want to chase down with our team. Our team's healthier than their team. They only have two people up. The two is here. We're going to go ahead, chase them down, run into the tower, the aggro so our team can push in here. We miss our ultimate. We're going to go ahead and start working on the Phoenix. Kamazots is able to get the pick onto Anubis. We want to make sure that we're standing inside of the Terra 3 to get the heal. 
We have Phoenix aggro, but we should be able to get this Phoenix no problem. We're going to go ahead and rotate out. We have a couple people that are pretty weak. Go ahead and strip away the enemy jungle on our retreat. So we're out, and then we see Heim getting pushed by Medusa. And we're like, alright, I don't think she knows we're here. We're going to hide. She sees us. We're going to cripple her. She can't dash. I think she used her dash and we actually canceled it. So now she doesn't have the ability on cooldown. We're going to keep chasing her down. We miss our blue one. We miss our ultimate. Heimdall is able to get the pick. Right now, we probably picked a fight we didn't want to take because our enemy team is rotating in. We're going to do our best to try to get Heimdall out of here. We're getting some good damage off. Cthulhu is able to fear us. We knock him up. We're going to hit him with our slow. Heim goes down to the Anubis. We're going to stun. We're going to go ahead and get some good damage. Kim's off rotates in. They will get the pick onto the Anubis. We're going to keep chasing down Cthulhu's one shot. We're going to go for him. Kim's off is able to get the pick. We're going to hit the Sun Wukong with our slow. And the Kim is able to clean up the Sun Wukong. So now it's just the Erlong Shen left. Minions have pushed up and right. We're going to get the Phoenix aggro. So Kim is can just run in here comfortably and get the Phoenix. Looks like we're kind of trying to make an end play on the Titan. We're just going to start using all of our abilities on him. We get ulted by Medusa. We get tagged by some damage. We're going to pop a curse on. So we got curse on for our second relic. Unfortunately, we go down. We got curse on for our second relic because we didn't build any anti heal into our kit. The Anubis is an issue. We fought him and he was able to lifesteal his way through the fight. We kind of lived longer than we thought he was going to. So we got Curse Ankh for the Anubis. We are going to go ahead and sell our Warrior's Blessing. Oh, we also picked up the Sledge. The Sledge is going to provide us 40 physical power, 300 health. 150 mana and 20% crowd control reduction. So now we're sitting at 40% crowd control reduction. If we get stunned for a second and we have 40% crowd control reduction, we're only going to be stunned for 0.6 seconds. The sledge also has a passive that for each enemy god within 55 units, we're going to gain a stacking buff that provides us with 10 magical and 10 physical protections. It can stack up to 3 times. So we sold our Warrior's Blessing, and we are going to be going into our first damage item, Heartseeker. Heartseeker is going to provide us 65 physical power, 200 mana, 20 MP5, and 10% physical penetration. It has a passive that our abilities are going to deal 2% of the target's maximum health. This effect can scale up. It starts scaling up at 200 power and reaches a cap at 400 power, and it can scale up to 5% of the target's maximum health. Subsequent hits are only going to deal 75% of the bonus damage for the next 3 seconds. So we have 219 physical power right now, so we're probably going to be dealing 2% per ability. But we have 6 abilities, so if we land all 6, that's not including our ult. If we land all 6 of our abilities, we can remove 12% of the enemy's maximum health. And that's not including just the base damage. So now we are kind of an issue for the enemy team. We're very tanky. We're dealing good damage to their tank characters. It would be very, very late for a soul eater buy. But I think we could sell boots for soul eater and that would help us really sustain in these fights. I don't know if the enemy team built any kind of anti-heal. Bit of a team fight going on. We're gonna try to target Anubis. He has no dashes, so he can't run away from us. And we should be able to try to take him out. Behind the able to get the pick onto the Anubis. Now we're going to turn our attention to the Medusa. We're going to get the slow. We're going to hit her with the cripple. We're able to get the pick onto the Medusa. Behind able to get the pick onto the Song Wukong. We miss our ultimate onto the Cthulhu. Behind able to get a triple kill. We're going to go ahead and work on the tower. 
Our minions should be able to get the middle phoenix. We're gonna go ahead and just push this left phoenix. We're gonna stand in the terror heal. Go ahead and step out of the phoenix. Now we should be able to close the game out. Furlong's trying to push our right lane. We have the whole team here. That's the end of this one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.